Hey everyone and welcome to what will for the time being be the final video covering background material necessary for PDEs. It's going to be about the Sturm-Liouville theorem. The Sturm-Liouville theorem is an interesting rule. Even though it applies to solutions of ordinary differential equations, it's used most often when solving partial differential equations. Funnily enough, as you'll soon see in the upcoming videos, we rarely ever solve a PDE without at some point turning it into an ODE or a bunch of ODEs. And that's why Sturm-Liouville can be really handy. I'm going to first state the theorem and then I'm going to prove it. So if you're not a math nerd and you don't like proofs, you don't have to watch the whole video, just this first part. Anyway, let's get to it. Suppose I have a linear homogeneous differential equation given by d2y by dx squared plus afx times dy dx plus bfx times y is zero. If I can rewrite this differential equation in the form of the derivative of p of x times dy dx plus q of x plus lambda times r of x times y equals zero, then it's called a Sturm-Liouville equation. Now the Sturm-Liouville theorem concerns the Sturm-Liouville equation and a couple of homogeneous boundary conditions at x equals a and x equals b. The combination of these is called the Sturm-Liouville problem. Non-zero solutions, non-zero because we don't care about zero solutions, to the Sturm-Liouville problem, the equations 1 and 2 combined, are called eigenfunctions. Now if I change the value of lambda up here in the Sturm-Liouville equation and keep everything else constant, and if I keep everything else constant, I'm going to get another eigenfunction, obviously because I'll be solving a different ODE. The parameter lambda in the Sturm-Liouville problem is called an eigenvalue. It's just like with matrices. Every eigenvalue gives me another eigenvector. So there's a correspondence between eigenvalues and eigenvectors. In the same way, there's a correspondence between eigenvalues and eigenfunctions in the Sturm-Liouville problem. All of the stuff that I mentioned is just the prelude to the actual statement of the Sturm-Liouville theorem, which is that if ym and yn are eigenfunctions of the Sturm-Liouville problem, corresponding to different eigenvalues, lambda m and lambda n respectively, then ym and yn are orthogonal with respect to r of x on the interval a to b. In other words, the integral from a to b of r of x times ym times yn is zero. This function r of x has a special name in the context of the Sturm-Liouville problem. It's called the weighting function, and that's the Sturm-Liouville theorem. Now, if you want to stick around, I'm going to start proving it. And in fact, I'll show you some special cases when you don't even need things such as the boundary conditions from equation 2. You don't even need those things in those special cases, and you'll still get your orthogonality. Let's start with our differential equation. Since ym and yn are solutions, because they're both eigenfunctions, to the Sturm-Liouville problem, the following relations hold true. Now let's multiply this first equation by y sub n and the second equation by the negative of y sub n, and we'll end up with two new equations. Now let's add these two new equations together to cancel out some common terms. We'll get y sub n times the derivative of p of x times dym by dx plus q of x plus lambda n times r of x times ym times yn minus ym times the derivative of p of x dyn by dx minus q of x plus lambda sub n times r of x times ym times ym. All of that equals zero. Now the terms in q of x just subtract out and they can go away, which leaves us with a simpler expression. We can shift the derivative terms to the right-hand side to get lambda sub n times r of x times ym times yn minus lambda sub n times r of x times yn times yn equals ym times the derivative of p of x dyn by dx minus yn times the derivative of p of x dym by dx. Now I can take the r of x times ym times yn term common from the left hand side and end up with this following equation. Here comes the fun part. Because we have to prove that orthogonality applies here, we're going to have to perform an integration. So let's integrate both sides from x equals a to x equals b. The integral on the left can just be left as is, but the integral on the right has to be simplified. Since it's in terms of ym, yn, and their derivatives, we can use a special technique called integration by parts. Here's how it works. 
If I'm integrating the product of two functions, then that just becomes the first function times the integral of the second minus the integral of the integral of the second function times the derivative of the first. I'm going to start by splitting the integral on the right hand side here into two parts to make things easier. For the first integral I'll choose my f2 which is my second function in the integration by parts to be the derivative of p of x times dyn by dx. For the second integral I'll choose my second function in the integration by parts method to be the derivative of p of x times dyn by dx. Evaluating the first integral I'll call it i1 I'll get the first function ym times the integral of the second, so integrating this will just mean getting rid of the derivative out front, minus the integral of p of x times dyn dx times dym dx. We can evaluate the second integral i2 in the same way. If we put them together back into our equation we left off at in our proof, here's what we'll get. We can simplify this further because the integral terms on the right hand side cancel out. Let's now apply the limits a and b on the right hand side. The first term would just become ym of b times p of b times yn prime of b minus ym of a times p of a times yn prime at a. Similar idea for the second term. Now let's combine the terms on the right that are multiplying p of a and p of b, and here's what we'll finally end up with. Now this is the point in the proof where we're done with all the algebra, and now we just have to show that the orthogonality relation applies using what was given to us. To do this, I'm going to break things up into two cases. In case 1, I'll assume that p of x is 0 at x equals a and x equals b. If this is true, then the right-hand side automatically becomes zero because of the p of b and p of a terms. And since lambda sub m and lambda sub n aren't equal to each other, which is what we said at the beginning of this theorem as part of the statement, it follows that the integral from a to b of r of x times ym times yn dx is zero. And so the proof is complete. If the first case applies, you won't even need boundary conditions you'll have orthogonality automatically because of the nature of p of x, which we had back in our sturm liouville differential equation. The second case isn't as easy to show, and it occurs when p of x is not zero and x equals a or x equals b. So for this situation, we'll have to go back to the boundary conditions we formed near the beginning when I was talking about the sturm liouville problem. Now since ym and yn are both eigenfunctions of the sturm liouville problem, not only must they satisfy the sturm liouville equation, they must also satisfy the boundary conditions. So for both ym and yn, we have to have the following hold true. If we rearrange all these equations in terms of the derivative terms evaluated at the boundaries, we'll end up with ym prime at a equals negative k2 over k1 times ym of a. And ym prime at b equals negative k4 over k3 times ym at b. Similarly, we also get yn prime at a equals negative k2 over k1 times yn at a. And then yn prime at b equals negative k4 over k3 times yn at b. Now let's go back to our equation and substitute these guys back in. Now look, the terms in the first set of brackets cancel out and so do the terms in the second set of brackets, so the entire right-hand side becomes zero. Once again, since the eigenvalues aren't equal to each other, we can say that the integral from a to b of r of x times ym times yn dx is zero. And so the proof of the sturm liouville theorem is complete. We get an orthogonality relation between two eigenfunctions of a sturm liouville problem with distinct eigenvalues. I'll see you in the next video.